yeah, it's becoming more and more apparent to me that the way to do this is to glue these joists to these panels before you put them on. Yes, I wish I would have done that to start with. Uh, it's not impossible to do it this way. It's just uh, gonna be a little more work. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If uh, you're new here, we're working through a renovation on this 1956 Calcraft. And uh, if you're not new here, you notice that we didn't post a video last week. What I was... <coughs> There's part of the reason why I wasn't able to get much work done. Uh, yeah, I was sick. So what I had hoped to be able to get done last week was to get all the joists secured and uh, build up that outer edge. So this week, I actually have time to work on it. And my hope is to do that exact thing and have this be one complete video where we get all these joists in place and build that outer rim. If you can hear a bunch of sound in the background, uh, the in-laws are over working on our house while I'm working on this. Uh, they've been gracious enough to take over some of the household stuff while I uh, uh, try to continue on with this project and get it done and get caught up to where I wanted to be. So basically what I'm doing to secure these joists uh, that were just clamped here is I'm going back and putting uh, glue on them and then I'm clamping them back into place. Uh, now the problem with doing that is that it doesn't put a lot of pressure here on the middle section. So what I'm doing to sort of counteract that, I'm taking a, a two by four and I'm clamping it diagonally across there uh, reasonably gently, not super difficult or not super tight to where it deforms it, uh, but enough to just push that and uh, give it some uh, pressure here so that I can go inside and uh, use my nail gun and nail down both edges of these panels into this joist. Now I'm gonna need to go back and kind of do the same thing with uh, some other joists that go in between here, uh, but it uh, worked really well when I did this first one, so uh, I'm just gonna keep on doing that. I also need to come back and run a couple screws in the ends of each of these joists, just to really truly secure them into the sides. Uh, and to do that, I'm gonna pre-drill these and uh, uh, countersink them so hopefully they don't split out the ends of the joists, which is unfortunately easy to do with this kind of wood. So that's what I'm gonna get to get into. So yeah, my little two by four bucking bar didn't work very well on that one. Um, so I'm, I'm a little disappointed by that, but uh, it wasn't too bad on this one. You wanna kind of avoid pushing out on the panels a lot uh, when you're trying to tack them. Uh, Cause if you warp them out and tack them down, they're always gonna be warped out. And that's definitely not what you want. You want everything to stay as flat and in line as possible when you're tacking those down, uh, which is kind of the purpose of the bucking bar. It, provides even uh, pressure on the outside so that you can push against it from the inside and uh, tack those nails in. Uh, so, but it worked okay. So we'll keep moving on. All right, well, I got all the joists on all the seams in place and uh, all the panels tacked to it. It looks nice and smooth. There's no buckling or anything. It's uh, just how I wanted it to look. So I'm really happy with uh, uh, 
uh, what I accomplished today. So that's a good feeling for a change. Uh, the next thing to do is going to be to work out some of these intermediary joists that go in between and to work out the framing for this back window, which is going to be a little bit complicated. I don't think it'll be that big a deal. Famous last words. Yeah, I'm going to think on that overnight and uh, tomorrow we're going to try to get that done. So moving right along. make this our little bit box, okay? So just put all these little bits in here. What's that? Hey, I don't know what that is. We need to get a broom and sweep up in here. I want to show that to Mom. You want to show that to Mom? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure she'll be excited to see it. Okay, so Simon helped me clean out the camper this morning so I could see how many um, joists I had left to install. Uh, and I may need to cut a few more because a couple of the ones that I had originally cut kind of warped and got sort of funky. So, But what I also did, <clears throat> I went ahead and went back to my SketchUp and I had, when I was taking, a, uh, taking the camper apart, I had recorded the distances kind of all the way around the outside of the camper between the joists just so I could sort of get an approximate idea of where they needed to go and how many there were and where they were and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then I made some uh, marks every three feet to kind of indicate where my um, panels are. Now one of these panels is actually not exactly three feet, it's still pretty close. Uh, but so I'm going to compare what I have with what I measured off originally and figure out where I still need to add additional joists and um, go from there. Okay, so it looks like I need six more joists, which um, I think I have. Just like I did last time, I'm going to start with the ones that are easiest to install, uh, which there's uh, actually two other joists that go directly below uh, where the front window is. So those are going to be pretty easy to put in, so I'll start there. Tiny bit more interesting. I need to put the joist that runs down here, uh, but I kind of want to put it in line with the cabinet that's going to be down here so that I can tie into it from the inside. And, and now I know a lot of people say, oh well the cabinets are attached from the outside. And yes that's true in a lot of cases. Uh, it was not true for the most part in this camper originally. But a lot of these cabinets are just attached to the quarter inch paneling. They totally missed a stud. In order to kind of figure out where that's going to go, I actually kept the original uh, seat that went there so that I can just drop it back in and see how it fits. So this should be interesting. That's all the framing there was on this. There was just this little piece that ran around the outside and honestly, it was never even attached in this direction. It was screwed on the inside to this wall and just into the wall joists. So, you know, I didn't keep every single piece of cabinetry that I pulled out of here. I just kept a few select pieces to kind of help me in reassembling. I will be sort of patterning um, the, the front uh, banquette off of these. So uh, this is, very similar to what's going back. I'm actually pretty tickled. I got this curve really close. But yeah, I'm going to take some measurements and uh, I'm going to put my joist right about here. I think that's the smart thing to do anyway.
Okay, so the next piece I'm gonna do is the piece that goes over the window, and I'm gonna have to uh, cut some more joists for that because I just I used them all up. So, um, you know, this one needs to be kind of accurate, and I don't like leaving windows to chance. So, I brought my window back up here, and we'll just put it up there and um, see what works compared to my measurements and uh, uh, make sure we get this just right. Yeah, I think that would be perfect. Perfect if I had another joist that wasn't split to go up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to try to tackle today is this back window. So essentially that's going to involve cutting two vertical pieces, which go on either side of the window, no big deal there. And then uh, there is a seam between those panels that's right below the joist that's above my finger. So I've got to have some horizontal pieces that go there to tack those panels into. Maybe a little bit of a problem is that I don't think I left enough gap between this and the next panel. So when they come together, they kind of, they sort of bump into one another. So I think I'm going to have to uh, adjust that edge a little bit using my Sonicrafter. Okay, so I've temporarily clamped a uh, joist back across there to keep uh, those two panels pressed up against one another, and I'm going to use the handy dandy mistake corrector to fix that. How do you do that? Well, you just need a teeny teeny amount removed between those two panels until they uh, sit flush with one another. So all you do is go through and trace right along that seam. Now it's not going to be the prettiest cut in the world, but in this case it's going to be covered up with trim anyway, so it's not really going to ever show. Uh, so you can get away with this. I've got to cut this so it's um, got a bit of a curve in it. So that there's a flat outer surface for the window to attach to. But the curve has to still follow this panel. So, kind of rough cut one. And I need to do it a little more precise, but I think this is going to work. So, okay, I've cut my piece, I've got the angles, I've uh, traced the curve on there. If you have a bandsaw, this would be really easy to cut out, just follow the line. Since I don't have a bandsaw, uh, I could use a jigsaw, but they tend to wander all over the place. I think what I'm going to try to do is uh, go to my drill press and just drill a bunch of holes all the way down there, and then um, come back and maybe cut through the holes using my jigsaw. Okay, well... That worked okay. Um, I didn't go all the way to the edges, but I think I will um, just hit it with my belt sander and uh, try to make it nice and smooth. But you can kind of see what it looks like. A little rough, but should be clean enough. mosquitoes so much. So yesterday I kind of framed in around the window there and I cut that 
curved so the uh, interior panel can maintain a nice smooth curve, but our outside can be flatter. It's important for that window to have a flat or mostly flat surface. Panes of glass are difficult to bend around a curve. So now one thing that did is it made those pieces less thick and I've got a seam between two panels running uh, right, right about there. Uh, which means I have to take some thickness out of the piece of wood that I'm going to put right there to uh, seal up the edge between those two panels. So I just uh, cut a couple pieces to length and then traced on there, um, uh, laid them up there and traced on there the angle I need to cut. So I'll just take that to the table saw and just zoop and um, should be just fine. Ta-da! So when it comes to making these uprights for this, I had an idea. On the back, I used my drill press to just drill a bunch of holes along that line that I marked and then uh, went through with my jigsaw and cut them out and then sanded the whole thing smooth. And, you know, it's all right. It's kind of time consuming. So I thought, there's gotta be a better way. And I thought, hey, you know, it'd be great if I could use my router with the flush trim bit with the flush trim bit to do the same thing but it's a little tricky because this is too wide for the flush trim bit so if you remember my flush trim bit there's a bearing right at the top there and so that rides along whatever surface you want to follow and then this cuts out whatever there is you need but if i get a different flush trim bit this one has the bearing down here at the bottom and cuts on top of it. So now if I take a quarter inch piece of plywood and I trace that curve on it and cut this out on my jigsaw, uh, which is a lot easier to do than cutting through this thickness on a jigsaw, uh, I can take this, once the curve's cut in it, clamp it down on the top of that, take that new bit I have, let that bearing ride along this curve that I'm cutting in this quarter inch, and cut through most of this, then switch back to the other bit and cut the rest, and it should be nice and even and smooth, and in theory, not take very much time. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this finished up. This video is gonna get done. It's gonna go up today.
right, well, I think that's going to do it for this week. Hope you enjoyed this video. Feels like we actually got a lot done on, on the camper, all those joists in, framed in the windows. Uh, you know, I'll probably, once once it's kind of dried up there I'll, on the front, I'll probably go and reinforce those corners just because it is such a large window. I want to make sure it's, uh, you know, good and secure. Didn't didn't quite get to uh, building up the, the edge curve this week, so that'll be a project for next week. New videos come out every Sunday, so make sure and like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so uh, you will find out as soon as they're posted, and we'll see you next week.